All right, welcome to Twisty Puzzle Math, um, video seven. Um, I have a little spoiler alert here. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, different solutions um, to the cube. This is not a huge spoiler video, just a tiny one. Um, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to say how to solve the puzzle, but I'm going to describe very briefly, or at least name different solutions. And so if you want to remain sort of completely in the dark um, solving the puzzle, you don't want to watch this video. If you want a tiny bit of information, feel free to continue to watch. This video is also for people, um, you know, most of us uh, have looked up the solution to the Rubik's Cube. The only solution I've ever looked up is the solution to the Rubik's Cube, and that was, I don't know, probably 12 or 13 years ago now. And uh, I don't regret it, but it's um, it's been fun trying to solve other puzzles, succeeding sometimes, failing others. And it's been fun solving this puzzle in various ways. So even if you only have a, an old-fashioned single Rubik's Cube, there's a lot of different things you can do with it if you get tired of um, the usual solving. So probably the way you learned to solve it is the layer method. And, and there are a number of variants with how you solve it, but generally there's a cross and then three or four corners and then some way of solving the middle four edges and then either a corners first or an edge first um, approach to the remaining layer. Um, so that, that, that's the classic way people learn. There are other ways, though. Um, one is the uh, corners first method. Um, position and then orient uh, corners. And then position and orient edges in that order. Now, you might say, why would I do that? that? That's silly. I mean, that's going to be so much slower than what I can do now. Why would I do that? And if you don't want to do it, that's perfectly fine. Um, some people uh, do like the challenge of, of figuring out a, a different version of the solution, and um, so that this is for them. But if, if you don't have an interest in that, you know, so I don't feel bad about it, uh, there are many ways to enjoy the cube. Uh, there's also an edges first method. This one I think is a, a little bit easier um, coming from the layer method. The corners first is, is not too bad. However, it could be fun um, to investigate, and I'll have a video on this eventually, um, to investigate the slice um, subgroup of the cube group, which is a great way of developing edge permutations, um, which are pretty useful for, for moving the edges around. There's also a method that was created um, by a guy named Lars Petrus. If you Google Lars Petrus, you'll find it. It involves solving a two by two chunk, then solving a two by two by three chunk, so you extend it. Then you extend that to a two by three by three chunk, and then you finish out the, the final layer. So these are, these are some fun ways uh, to do it. Uh, what else can you do with this uh, cube? Well, um, here's a pretty easy sticker mod, sort of an anti-sticker mod, is you can make your very own void cube. It costs nothing, except maybe replacement stickers. Um, the void cube is a really cool mechanical puzzle that is uh, hollow. It doesn't have any of the uh, centers. You can see right through it. Um, I'll, I'll bring mine down at some point. I should have brought it down uh, right now. But um, you, you don't need to see it. Uh, if you peel the stickers off the center, you make your own void cube. And it makes the puzzle a little more challenging. And there is something different that can happen at the end of the puzzle when you're solving it that um, you won't be ready for having um, the only the solution for the classic um, Rubik's Cube. So that's a good one. Uh, another uh, challenge... Which is which is good for de for developing some of this um, some of this uh, these techniques for commutators and conjugates is a bandage cube. Take some some transparent tape, some masking tape or whatever, not masking tape, but scotch tape, and go ahead and tape a little two by two by one. Oh, sorry, a one by one by two. Having this little chunk floating around your cube will mess you up because you won't be able to make just any turn you want. 
In fact, it destroys the group structure of the cube. It makes it into a, di a different mathematical object. I always forget whether it's a monoid or a semi-group. Um, you can Wikipedia it. it, it so it, it, um, the, the moves aren't always allowed anymore. You can't always do the binary operation. And so just this little chunk will make the puzzle certainly doable, but again, a little more interesting. And um, another good variation is to um, bandage this whole 2x2. Two two. And so you'll only have access to F, R, and U. So it's a subgroup, whatever that is. I'll talk about that in the future of the cube. So there are various ways you can take your single puzzle, your single Rubik's cube, and make a whole bunch of other puzzles um, out of it to practice some of these ideas and to, to hone and, and, and prime these techniques. So that's all I want to talk about in this video.